For the following exercises, determine whether there is a minimum or a maximum value to each quadratic function, and we need to find that value and then find the axis of symmetry. Okay, so this is the first uh, question of this stack. So we have this quadratic function. I know that it's a quadratic function because it has the highest x value as being squared. Okay, so anything that has an x value being squared is a quadratic function, the highest one. So if I had like an x cubed, that wouldn't be a quadratic function. If I would just, if I got rid of this and I just had it an x value, that's not a quadratic function. So we know that this is a quadratic function. Now we just need to find if there's a minimum or a maximum to this quadratic function. So we should know that there are two types of quadratic functions, right? If I just quickly draw two graphs here. Well, what a beautiful graph. We know that quadratic functions, they're very simple, right? They're either smiling at us, in which the arrows are like this. You see, like, this is like the teeth, right? It's, it's a smile, or it's a frown. That's it. Quadratic functions look like this, or they look like this. Now, the vertex is the point in which the graph will change from, in this case, going down to going up. And the same thing here. The vertex, I drew it, it looks like it would be somewhere over here. This is the point in which the graph, you know, is turning. It's like the tippy-tippy point. So, if your quadratic function is smiling, you will have a vertex all the way down here. So you will have a minima. Memorize this, okay? And then if you have a frown, your vertex is a maxima. These terms, minima and maxima, refer to if the vertex is the minimum point or if it's the maximum point of the graph. Now, how do we know if a quadratic is smiling at us or if it's frowning at us? Well, we have to look at the A value, all right? In this case, the A value, since it's smiling, it's super positive. So it just has to be a positive number. Since this uh, quadratic is frowning at us, it's sad, so it's negative. Now, if I look here, where is my A value? Remember, this is the general form, right? And the general form of a quadratic function is always ax squared plus bx plus c. The A value is always in front of the x squared, and the A value here is a 2. So my A value, in this case, is a positive number. So I know that this graph is like this. So, actually, I don't want to do that just yet because I don't know where my vertex actually is. So I'm not going to draw that graph again. But I know that we're dealing with a minima value here. So we answered the first question. We answered that it will have a minimum value. A minima is the same thing as a minimum value, and then the same thing for a maxima. It, it's the same thing as a maximum value. So either way that you look at it. So we already know that this quadratic, since the a is positive, we have a minimum value. Okay, now we just got to get that number. Well, remember, it comes from the vertex. And the vertex has two components. It's an x comma y, but specifically for a quadratics, we know it as h comma k. You can remember this because h comes before k in the alphabet, all right? But now how do we get h's and k's, right? In the general form, I only have a, b's, and c's. So just know that the standard form is written as a x minus h squared plus k. 
Now, for this, they didn't even care that we had to write it in the standard form, so we don't even need this in here. But we need to find out what H is. H also equals negative B divided by 2A. That's the formula to go from general form, B's and A's, to H's. So now let's just take this value, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this a little bit down here. I want to just list out, I like to always list out what my A, B, and C value is. Just like we said, our A was uh, 2. I have a number in front of here, that's the B value, and I have a number over here, that's the C value. So I have a 2 for A, a 10 for B, and a 12 for C. Using these numbers, to plug in for this formula, h would be equal to negative b, so negative 10, all over 2a, so 2 times 2. If we just simplify this, right, this would be equal to negative 10 divided by 2 times 2 is 4, and I can get this into being even more simplified. The common number between 10 and 4 is 2, so 2 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 10 is 5. So my h value here would simplify down to negative 5 over 2. Okay. Now, quick note, the h value, right, is really the x, right? If we listed this as an x comma y, the h value is really the x, and the k value is really the y. What makes these a minimum or a maximum is the y value, right? Here's the y-axis. This going up would be the maximum. This going down would be the minimum. So h isn't the value of the minimum or the maximum. The h is the axis of symmetry. So that's answering the second part. Now, when we, when we actually write out what the axis of symmetry is, we don't write it in terms of h. I know it's silly. Because in standard form, the graph is in y comma, you know, x comma y, right? Not k and h. So we still have to write it as x equals negative 5 over 2. That is the axis of symmetry. Now we just got to find out what that value is, right? We still got to find out the value of the minima or the maximum. That is your k value. Now how do we find a k value? Well, the k value is f of H. That's why you will always solve for H first, and then you'll solve for K. What K is, is you're just taking your H value and plugging it into your, uh, your formula, basically. So this would be F of negative 5 over 2. Now what does that really mean, right? That means that you're going to be plugging in negative 5 over 2 for all of the x values in your graph. So if I can, I'm going to just erase uh, this part, the h equals negative b over 2a, because we found out that the h and the axis of symmetry was negative 5 over 2. Just so that I have extra room. And now let's just write this out. k equals f of negative 5 over 2. So this would be 2 times 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2, be careful. Any slips up here would, you know, give you a wrong answer. So just make sure that you run through it all nice. So this would be plus 10 times a negative 5 over 2 plus 12. Okay, so now let's just simplify this, right? Negative 5 over 2 squared is the same thing as negative 5 over 2 times negative 5 over 2. And remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the top and we multiply the bottom. So this would be 2 times negative 5 over, uh, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, 
2 times 2 is 4. So this would be 2, 25 over 4. Plus 10 times a negative 5 over 2. We can simplify this. There's a 2 in the denominator. There's a 10 up top. I can cancel the 2 out. That would give me a 1, right? And then 2 times what will get me 10? It's a 5. So 5 times a negative 5 is a negative 25. So I can say just negative 25 and then plus 12. Got to clean this up even more. 2 times this fraction. I could cancel out the 2 because I have a 4 down here. 2 times what is 4? 2. So this really equals 25 over 2 minus 25 plus 12. Now, if you want to, you can just, you know, put this into the calculator. I like to work with fractions. I'm probably the only one that likes to work with fractions. <laughs> but by me working with fractions gives you, um, you know, more, uh, more work with fractions. Because I know a lot of students, they don't like fractions. Um, so 25, right? I have everything over 2. So I want to get every denominator as a 2 value. It's really a 1 right now. So 1 times 2 in the denominator, but I have to do the same as the top. 25 times 2 is 50, and then 1 times 2 is 2. So a negative 25 would be the same thing as saying a negative 50 over 2, right? If I did 50 divided by 2, that's a negative 25. And then the same thing here, right? This was over 1, but I want it times 2. I multiply the same thing on the top. 12 times 2 is 24. And the bottom would be 2, so this would be plus 24 over 2. And now remember, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you add and subtract the top, but you keep the bottom exactly the same. So let's just do this real quick. This would equal 25 minus 50 is a negative 25, right, plus 24, and this would all be over 2. Negative 25 plus 24 is a negative 1, so this would be equal to negative 1 half. And that's your k value. This is your, um, your value of your minimum here, because we said that it was a minimum value. So this is your min value. Um, so yeah, so find the value. The value is a negative one half, right? And the axis of symmetry was x equals negative five over two. Remember, the value is the k value. And the axis of symmetry is really the h value. But when we say that it's an axis of symmetry, you have to say it's x, okay? So um, that's it, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you. And just remember these two things. These go together, okay? So frowning, smiling, max, mins, and it all correlates with your A value, okay? All right. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you want. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Have a great, great day and happy studying. Bye-bye.